Hey guys, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. The 100 series is now available to you if you are in the PTU and a subscriber. You have access to the three models. We'll take a look at the stats in a second. And then some beauty shots as I walk around the ship. So first of all, there are three models. There is the Starter Touring, which is the 100i. Then the 125a, which is black in color and is the light fighter. Then the 135c, which is the light freight with all slight differences between them. Uh, just beyond the paint job also. But more importantly, let's take a look at some stats here. So, starting with the 100i, uh, you have a, a decent starter ship. Now, these are the entry-level ships into the Origin lineup. Origin being sort of the BMW of the Star Citizen universe. So the ships are clean, they're sleek, they're high-tech. There's a, a bespoke uh, air intake fuel system. We'll take a close look in a second. But uh, some stats to start off with, uh, 458 DPS. Uh, 7,580 damage with two missiles. This is, of course, the um, the starter touring model. So nothing spectacular there, but it is a pretty ship. Shields at 3,600. And uh, coming in with the web shield and the power bolt power plant as standard with the Arctic Storm coolers all as stock equipment coming in. Now, changing that over to the... 125a which is the combat variant right over here which is black i gotta say the between the color schemes the blue and orange really does it for me so let's take a look at the the black one there so coming in right away with six missiles compared to two uh, 22,740 damage, so a lot of missile damage there with the fighter model of it and coming in with stock the expedition quantum drive the all-stop shields, and the regular power plant and bracer coolers on that. So uh, the big difference essentially being the components, but those components you can have to swap out with uh, a bit of money, not too expensive at all. And finally, the last model there is the 135, which is the freight one. Uh, again, back down to two missiles, uh, same DPS on the weapons. You're coming in with the expedition uh, quantum drive same as the others but you have the bulwark shields and the fortitude power plant with thermax uh, coolers on that so these ships aren't meant to deal out any kind of damage um, but they are essentially the beginner ship you're not gonna be fighting too much in them just quickly before we dive into the footage of the ships themselves here we have the three compared to each other uh, the starter touring the light fighter and the light freight now, they are all the same size. The differences come in with the speed. The light, to the touring, first of all, at 210 meters per second. The fighter comes in at 230 meters per second, the fastest one. And the slowest of the group is the freight, as you would expect, at 190 meters per second. Everything else is pretty much the same through all of them, except for the small differences I showed you in weaponry, shields, and coolers, whatever comes stuck with them. So let's take a look now at some beauty shots. Panning over from the starboard side to the port, this looks like something out of a Michael Bay movie, that glare coming off it is blinding. Uh, the lighting on these pads is a bit bright, but look at that. Isn't that a beautifully styled and aggressive looking starter ship? I like the design a lot better. I hate to say it, I like the design better than the other starter ships. Look at the attention to detail, all those small different lines kind of separating the different sections of the front end. And this is interesting. The quantum drive, lies right over here so you push that to open and exposes the internals of that component look at the attention to detail in there kind of the scruff looking metal the reflections are different this is exactly what you think the components should look like and it's done beautifully um some interesting gameplay mechanics out of this would be that uh, if you're in any kind of pve or pvp and you get shot or you shoot someone in that region uh, you could disable their quantum drive. They would have to go and repair it or they wouldn't be able to jump. Little winglet here for stability in atmosphere. The thruster with another thruster assembly right above it. And a rather beefy and strong looking door compared to some of the other ships. Also the stairs, much beefier and thicker looking than the stairs in the other ships, capable of holding your weight because you've been in quarantine for the last year, right? This button over here uh, opens and closes the doors and look at that hinge, nicely done. This of course is the bespoke air system, the adaptive intake refinery that will scoop up hydrogen when you're flying and keep you refueled or extend your ability to fly and travel. 
Uh, and I guess if you turn your engines off, that still scoops and you can refill your tanks if that mechanic is still in the game. Looking under the wing, here we have an M4A. This is a size 2 gimbal. This puts out 229 DPS, one under each wing. Uh, I didn't actually try si uh, fixed size 3s, but that should work there. Take a look at this. Look at the beautiful reflection maps here. Isn't that pretty? And the very distinctive stern of the ship, reminiscent of the 600i in design with that fin on the back over there. Uh, look at that piston. It's worn, looks like it's used. Landing gear looks good. I like that. And panning down the other side now. This is my favorite part. Look at that line just separating the top of the ship from the bottom of the ship. It's smooth, it's clean. Moving forward to the little winglet and the aggressive styling of the front end. Now, taking a look on the inside. It is rather sparse, but this is a starter ship, so you shouldn't be expecting too much. It has the basics, has a bed for logout, unlike the Mustang, which has no bed for logout unless it's the beta. But that is very useful when traveling, being able to log out the game just by going to bed there. And uh, let's jump in the pilot seat and check out the cockpit. You will note, look at that beautiful field of view. This is a great cockpit, by the way. Great view. Now, the cockpit is unique in the sense that I think this is the second ship probably that has the physicalized buttons put in. That is, these buttons have an actual feature. Uh, this one, for example, does the open and closing of exteriors. This is the power on and off, and this one has not been assigned yet. And that green one there is engines on and off and cruise control. I can imagine when VR is implemented, this will be great. You can simply reach out and touch a button. The cockpit itself layout is ergonomical. It is minimal. Everything is where you need it, beautifully done vastly superior from the original starter ships, in my opinion. Working our way to the back, we have the power and the shield generator right over there. You can repair them if needed, easy access. And right below them, Two standard cargo units of space. You can see the little magnetic tiles there to hold it in. You can access your cargo from inside the ship. Very nicely done. Everything is where you need it. I like it. Okay, now the 125A. Now this looks a bit lighter than what it should. Again, the lighting here is very bright, but this is a much darker gray. Biggest difference between this ship and the 100 is, oh, I forgot to show you, um, the cooling components under the wing, by the way. The other one was on the pad, so I couldn't reach it, but there it is. Again, easy access, but also easy to shoot, I guess. Uh, this ship here has missiles in the middle instead of more cargo, like we'll see in the next one. And here we have the freight model. I like this one the best, the color scheme, the blue and the orange. It is beautiful. Reflections here are pretty harsh, excuse that. But uh, the, the big difference in this ship comes at the rear end over here, open that up. And here comes the magic for SCUs. One, two, three, four. Magnetic tiles there to hold your cargo and uh, the rest of the cargo is accessible from the inside. Let's go take a look. Now, here's something important. Remember how you'd always stumble from zero G into gravity? No more stumbling, see that? Yeah, 
and here is the extra two cargo units in there same as the previous ships extra components So there you have it, guys. What do you think? Let me give you my personal opinion here on something. That unless there is a star system with a jump point that only allows small craft to go through like this. Personally, I don't see any point in the game where I'll be driven to go to a beginner starter ship. Now, if you're just getting into the game and this is the ship you choose, amazing. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a great way to get into the Origin lineup. You're buying a fancy BMW type ship. It's great. But for the rest of you that have been around for a while, will you ever get into a starter ship for any reason at all? So I hope they put something in the game which kind of forces you to use a starter ship, in which case the Aurora is superior to everything, as we all know. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you enjoyed this channel, you know what to do. Your comments below, appreciate it. Give me a subscription if I've earned it from you. And a thumbs up if you like this content. I will catch you in the next one.